Number 10, Crater Lake. Yes, that's right, Crater Lake. I actually didn't know anything about this place before looking at a picture of it, and well, I, I just couldn't resist. It looks really cool. It looks like Lake Verity from Pokemon. Huh? Huh? Eh. In reality, it's one of the deepest lakes found in the United States and was created by a nearby volcano that erupted over 7,000 years ago. It was powerful and it collapsed and shaped the ground around it. Many different rocks and minerals can be found in the area, making it a geologist's sandbox. For me, I think it's a great place to practice poetry. Yes, that's right ladies and gentlemen, I do it all. Here's my haiku for Crater Lake. Deep water mountain, a memory of time past, Central Oregon. Number 9, Abu Simbel Temple. The Abu Simbel Temple is kind of misleading in terms of names, considering it's actually two temples. The temples were built during the reign of King Ramses II because of course it was. One of them is actually a temple dedicated to one of his wives, Nefertari. Hey babe, I built a whole temple so people can worship you as much as I do. <laughs> Oh, also, I built another bigger, more impressive temple that's dedicated to me because I love you, but I'm clearly much better than you, <laughs> Pharaoh life. These massive temples were meant to display the strength and power of the rulers of Egypt, and I feel like it did just that, while also boosting up the ego of this incredibly successful and powerful Pharaoh. Number eight, Lake Retba. Water, it's important. So before I start, I'm gonna remind everyone to go drink some. For real, you'll feel better. There you go, you see? If you're like me, then you love water. I love drinking it. I love swimming in it. Heck, one day, I'd love to see the clear waters of the Caribbean. I've never been. Now, whether or not you like it or not, we can all agree that water is blue, right? Even Adam agrees. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, see? What if I told you there's a pink lake? What? I know, Lake Retba, Lake Retba of Senegal is such a body of water. I can imagine the confusion of coming across this lake and seeing the nearby ocean, which is blue, and then the Lake Retpa, which is pink. You do a double take. I know I would. Why so pink? Not because of your embarrassment, because your uncle said something insensitive at the Thanksgiving dinner table. No, but because of a high concentration of salt and algae. 40% salt in some places, actually. Strangely enough, some small fish can be found living in the less salty parts. Sometimes nature is wild. I didn't know that one. I learned something today. Number seven, Bagan. You may have at least seen this one before because the pictures of this place are absolutely stunning. Not to mention, the area is massive. The 2,200 peaked dome temples that make up this ancient 9th to 13th century capital city of Pagan is one of the best and richest archaeological sites in all of Asia. But because of its modern day location in the rogue state of Myanmar, it makes it fly under quite a few people's radars. The Kingdom of Pagan was one of the first to unify the area, making this site a big deal as well as totally stunning. If you do go or have gone here, what do you think? Apparently, almost every single temple is unique, and you can go inside almost all of them. Andrew, travel show? Number six, Mato Tapia. The Devil's Tower, that's a much better name, easier for me to pronounce. Here's another one that I didn't know, or, well, I didn't know, I don't really know much either, to be honest. Plus, more geology, and rocks are just cool. We love rocks. Located near Crook County, Wyoming. Usually found in cowboy country, which gives me an excuse to use this voice, back in the shaft west, but not exclusive to it. Devil's Tower was the first national monument declared by cowboy rough rider himself, Theodore Roosevelt. The name most likely came from a mistranslation. The rock itself actually stands around 5,000 foot, and it is not a place you'd want to be stuck as buttes, as it's so called, like this, are more like pillars than mountains. They have a steep drop off. To me, it looks like someone got a little too crazy with a train editor in SimCity 4, but that's just me. I don't know. Number 5, Incaliita. Incas! Bet you thought of Peru. Well, joke's on you, we're going to Bolivia for this ancient Inca site. Incaliita is a 67 hectare site believed to be used as an area to perform rites for the ceremonial calendar. It's got quite a few buildings that are pretty important, like the Kalanka, which is the largest single roofed room in the Western Hemisphere when it was built. Ooh, ah. Incaliita actually also had a whole opera created in honor of it, which was the first opera ever created in Bolivia in 1980. My dream is to one day also have an opera made in my honor. It will be called The Ballad of the Boy Who Had to Sniff the Farts of a Blue-Eyed Blonde Menace. 
Number four, Vikings in Canada? Some of you might know about this one, but I'm going with it because it's so cool. Many, many, many years ago, before the first Europeans showed up in North America, the Norsemen had already made their journey across the ocean. They even made a small settlement in Newfoundland. Oh, hey, that's where it goes, everybody. Proof Old Leaf Erickson and their settlement still reside there today. Pretty cool. It's lasted this long, to be honest. So, what went wrong? I mean, come on, Canadians, we're so nice, right? Not like we just fart on command or anything. Well, for starters, it wasn't Canada. It wasn't anything. The most common explanation is that they didn't really get along with the Aboriginal tribes of the area, or the ones that already inhabited the so called Vinland, as they called it. The Vikings were not exactly the bloodthirsty barbarians some of history makes them out to be, but, well, they did do their fair share of Nazi things. They did do some things that went very nice. So, you can kind of see how that went south. Just imagine how different our history would be if they succeeded in more settlements here. Number three, Unakoti and Tripura. You know when you've got to go to the airport to go on vacation with your dad and he makes everyone wake up too early and get super mad and super stressed? That's basically what happened in the Hindu myth when Lord Shiva stayed overnight here while on his way to Kashi. Accompanying him were 9,999,999 gods and goddesses who Shiva asked to wake up before sunrise to continue their journey. Just like your dad, when the gods and goddesses didn't wake up, Shiva cursed them. But unlike your dad, he turned them to stone with his curse. And that's how we got Unakoti, which translates to one less Akoti, or one less of 10 million. But no, you won't find one less than 10 million stone carvings here. You will find a whole heck of a lot though. The area surrounding this 7th or 9th century ancient site is gorgeous, with natural waterfalls, lush forest, and a 30 foot high rock cut Shiva carving. So wait, if Shiva is here, who was the one less than 10 million? Number 2, Accra. Today you don't hear much about the city in the sand by the Mediterranean. A city with so much history I couldn't possibly unpack it all. Kind of like when you move and there's still four boxes staring you in the face. I'm gonna unpack them mom, I swear. The city has gone under numerous power changes and faced much turmoil. However, the most important part of its history would be the Knights Templar. During the Crusades, this was a hotbed of holy war and all the fun and so not misery that that brings. Archaeologists unearthed many Templar secrets including churches, cathedrals, water reservoirs, underground bunkers and a network of tunnels. Knights in chainmail having big old sword fights in castles. You can't go wrong. Oh, and don't forget the gold. There's lots of uh, Templar gold to dig up too. Boy, what would I do to get my hands on some Templar gold? Damn. Number one, Chand Bowery. What's that? It's a well. That's a little excessive. Indeed it is, but it's still incredibly cool, and I guarantee you haven't heard of it. If you have, well I'm sure I'll hear about it at least five times in the comments. Chand Bowery is a 13 story well built between 800 and 900 AD. What's so special about this well? Well, it's beautiful for starters, and just look at it. Secondly, it's also made out of volcanic porous stones. And thirdly, it's five to six degrees cooler than the outside atmosphere because of those stones, which makes it ideal for how freaking hot it is in Rajasthan. As well as go, this one is extra elaborate. I mean, I just, I just want some water, man. Number 10, Atlantis. The poster boy for lost cities and the name given to many gentlemen's clubs across the world. Yes, the lost city of Atlantis always comes to mind when talking of ancient cities. I mean, how could it not? A beautiful ancient Greek port city with straits surrounding an island or at least this is how it was described by our boy Plato. And pretty much everything we know about the sunken city comes from him. Was it really a wonder of the ancient world? Was it really anything like he describes it? Or anyone describes it for that matter? Maybe, but we're not even sure. We're not even sure if it really existed beyond Plato's writings to be honest. There have been some evidence to suggest that a city of its likeness existed near Spain, but calling that concrete proof is like saying I've never once had a beer in my life. It would be beyond me and the boys to crack open some cold ones. I've never done that. And I'm definitely not gonna do that this weekend. You guys wanna have some beers or what? Number nine, Troy. Remember when Brad Pitt was Brad Pitt? I know, right? I don't know what it is, but he's just not the same dude anymore. Maybe he got old, I don't know. The ancient city of Troy, besides being portrayed in the 2004 summer blockbuster, is famous for its legendary war, featuring Troy's least favorite equine guest, the Trojan horse. If we're to believe what Hollywood says about history, and why not, they never get it wrong, the Trojans were having an issue breaking down the walls of Troy. It's some good walls. So nice, that's a nice wall, you know, good walls. I don't know. They had some good walls. So to get through that, they built a giant rocking horse on wheels because 
That's a very comforting gift to give someone, right? Who doesn't love a rocking horse? It's a little creepy. But little did the people of Troy know that there was Trojans hiding inside. Hence the Trojan horse was born. Or the act of doing a Trojan horse, if that makes sense. Whatever it was, it was a slaughter, and this may have something to do with the city's disappearance. I don't know. Maybe it was Brad Pitt. Maybe it was uh, Orlando Bloom. He was in that movie. And there was another guy in that movie, I think. It's an okay movie. I don't know. Orlando Bloom's kind of cute. I don't know. We'll see. Number eight, Mesa Verde. The Mesa Verde cave dwellings are a sight to behold. Given for its age and the remnants of the Pueblo civilization, they are well preserved. Structures and houses that are dug into the cave dwellings in southwest Colorado. This is one I actually didn't know about. So today, I'm having fun and learning. Something my grade 11 English teacher was all about. Shout out to Miss Middleton, you're, you're the best. I miss you, you're the best. Sadly for the people living in the caves of Mesa Verde, they did not have such a cool teacher to tell them what's up. Because if they did, they probably would have been more careful. As a serious drought, lack of prey, and a good old fashioned sickness pretty much wiped them out. Yeah, no good. But no one is 100% sure what happened. What we do know, however, is that they left some sweet structures behind. Cowboys looted the place when it was rediscovered in the 1800s, and Miss Middleton was one of the only teachers to let me be me in class. And that's just awesome, so thank you. And the cowboy, people want to see more cowboy. You're all right, partner. <laughs> Number seven, Pompeii. Oy vey, this is a bad one. Pompeii, one of the crowning jewels of the cities that made up the Roman Empire. And truth be told, it's on my travel list. Always wanted to go there. You got Romans, you got togas, and you got one of the worst, if not the worst, natural disaster of the ancient world. Imagine being the guy who finds a skeleton under fossilized volcanic ash, which for most people working in that line of work would say that's a good day. But imagine how those guys felt when they found the whole lost city of Pompeii underneath all that volcanic ash. Great success, as the story goes. People were chilling in Pompeii. The Mediterranean paradise that it was was completely cut off guard when Mount Vesuvius bited all its liquid hot magma and busted an eruption so bad it destroyed the city within a short amount of time, covering the people in hot ash that must have felt like the mud bath from hell. Literally. There's still yet more to be discovered. I think they found like a restaurant or something and there was like some still paint on the walls. It was pretty cool, pretty cool stuff. Number six, Petra. Red Rose City, as it's called. Petra is an ancient city located in Jordan's Southwest Desert and most of you probably know it because of Indiana Jones. I know, it's okay, me too. I'm not gonna pretend I actually know everything. That's the best Indiana movie, no cap. You may also know it from Civilization Games. I was never a fan of settling cities in the desert. Not enough resources for me. Pop culture references aside, Petra is a beautiful piece of history from the ancient world. Despite being full of sand, Petra shows evidence of a great water conduit system, which you kinda need since you are in the desert. It was thought to have been completed around 312 BC and rediscovered in the 1800s. Not by cowboys, though, different people this time. I gotta say, though, it must be a great feeling to discover a place of lost history like that. And it weren't no cowboys, it would've been, it would've been British, it would've been, oh, right, and what's that? Something like that, I don't know. Number five, Thebes. One of the most successful ancient cities in Egypt. At first, she was a great place to be, and at one point was estimated to have a population of 40,000, making it one of the largest. Thebes was built like many other cities in Egypt, close to the Nile River. Almost like that river was important or something. Naturally, since the city was a pinnacle of civilization, it made it a target for many other factions and issues, internal and external. The arrival of Greco-Roman rule doesn't help either. Eventually, the city deflated over time, including its economy, which for us humans is a big one. What, what no money? I'm out of here. Number four, Alexandria. Now this is one city I would have loved to see in its prime. Founded by the Greeks during their conquest, specifically Alexander the Great, it became one of the greatest cities of the ancient world. The lighthouse alone earns it a spot on this list, but some would argue the library of Alexandria is much more important. My dyslexia disagrees, but my heart full of love and history tends to agree. A building containing this much knowledge is a very valuable thing to have, especially all those years ago. Thousands of scrolls were stored in the library. Archimedes himself may have invented his hand pump while studying at the library. Pretty cool. Well, where is it? What happened to it? Come on, Chad, tell us. Okay, okay, hold on. As the legend goes, a one Julius Caesar burned down some Egyptian boats that were chilling in the docks. And if you guys know fire, then you know it likes to jump from other things to burn. And it did. And now the library's gone. And now I'm here talking about it. Number three, Babylon. Okay. I take back what I said. I would have loved to see the city of Babylon in its prime. Being that this city pre-exists a lot of the Egyptian cities, makes sense as to why it ain't there no more. It was humanity's first crack at civilization. 
we did okay there for a minute. Famous for King Hammurabi and his code of laws, which every first year law students know at the top of their heads. There will be a test, guys, so be prepared. And of course, the mythical hanging gardens of Babylon. This is another one we aren't sure if it was there or not, but my biggest defense for the hanging gardens is the pyramids. Any expert will tell you how complex they are, so to me, it doesn't seem that impossible. Years and years of regime changes and external factors made Babylon go bye bye. It's not there anymore. You can't go there. It's not there. You don't find it. You find something else there. There's another guy there now. You never find it. Number two, El Dorado. Dios mío, toda el oro. But yes, that's right, my Spanish speaking friends. The lost city of gold, El Dorado. Well, maybe it might have not have actually existed either. But given the mouth-watering hunger the Spanish had for North American gold, they were willing to believe anything, including rumors of a city made from untouched riches. Plus, the other European nations hadn't got there yet, so this meant chalk one up for Spain. If they could find it, which they never did, because again, it probably didn't exist. So technically, we lost a city quickly because it might not have existed and they needed the gold and Spain did some stuff. Number one, Machu Picchu. I choose you, Machu Picchu. I'm sorry, that was that was bad pun. I gotta make a clean joke every once in a while. You never know, someone might find it cute. We'll see. Speaking of cute and bad segues, we don't know much about Machu Picchu. There's just no written language to help us discover, well, what was going on there. What is going on here? Machu Picchu. Anyway, not a bad joke. However, there is some speculation that it was built for a king or the boss or something. I'll, I'll add to that by saying that I've played enough video games to know that the bad guys, bosses, and kings always build their layers to the top of stuff. Maybe to be close to the gods. Maybe it was the view. Or real estate value. I'll never know. But whatever the reason, it was abandoned shortly after the Spanish showed up to Eurofy the area. Number 10. Mesa Verde. When I think of places I'd like to pop my city, I can honestly say I don't first think of under a cliff. But think about it, natural protection from the elements, assuming the cliff doesn't erode away over time like everything does, dropping huge chunks of rock on you from above. At Mesa Verde National Park in Colorado, you'll find the remains of cliff dwellings and the cliff palace of the Pueblo people who inhabited the area around 900 years ago. The Pueblo people lived for a long time on top of the top of the mesas for over 600 years and then began to move to and build anything from storage rooms to whole villages underneath the cliffs, probably for protection from the climate change and harsh weather, but I'm assuming it was to just get some well needed shade. Number 9, Samarkand. All roads lead to Rome. Well, then all Silk Roads lead to Samarkand. Or at least it was a famous pit stop along the way. No one is quite sure when Samarkand was founded. Some evidence suggests that there had been humans living in the area from at least 40,000 years ago. Long time. But one thing is for sure, both its history and finances were quite wealthy. Silk Jade and all the goods that the Silk Road offered made their way to and through Samarkand. This made the city very wealthy. It exchanged empires the same way I exchanged bad gifts from your aunt at Christmas. Persian, Greek, Mongol, and most recently Soviet in what is now called Uzbekistan. Today you can still find ancient buildings and mosques from a time long past, as that was the main religion. However, the city was also a place of culture and art, which meant for a long time there was some coexistence going on. But it's really nice amongst the different faiths. Very nice, I like. Number eight, Orkney Islands. You've heard of Stonehenge, but that's been overdone countless times before. You want something new, a different location with the added benefit of having other sites for the kids to go to and check out nearby. Look no further than the stunning Orkney Islands, home to the stones of Stennis, Meishau, the Ring of Bodgar, and Skara Bray, otherwise known as the heart of Neolithic Orkney. Stennis is our main standing Stonehenge-like attraction. Meishau is a lovely underground burial mound sporting some striking 12th century Viking graffiti. Skara Bray is an in-ground stone-built Neolithic settlement. And last but not least, the Ring of Brodgar is an even bigger circle of stones. You'll be well removed here at Orkney, situated as an archipelago right at the tippy top of Scotland with stunning views, angry Scottish neighbours, and the Nordic founded town of Kirkwall. Just Bring a jacket, maybe. Number seven, Nan Madal. This is one I had never heard of before. Very interesting too, especially one that has been described as the Venice of the Pacific. Sometimes I'm described as that, not really. Some even think it has connections to Atlantis, Ooh, maybe. That I'm not sure of. However, if you took a pleasure cruise with your spouse down to the Pacific, and why not? Most people can't say that they've done that, so go do it. You would find an ancient stone ruins built upon some land, and more interestingly, built upon a coral reef. A series of small artificial islands connected by canals. 
once belonging to the Saudler dynasty, I'm pretty sure I said that right, which yes, that's new to me too. Today, Namadal is a protected heritage site. So you know what, Bumblebees? Don't go there and take anything that you weren't supposed to. Go look, but don't touch. I'm watching. I'm watching. Always watching. Number six, the city of Karl Supe. The ancient city of Karl Supe is the oldest civilization center in the whole of the Americas, being over 5,000 years old. You'll find this lovely World Heritage Site in the desert of Peru's Supe Valley, north of the Lima River. Being first built in 26,000 BC, before the Great Pyramids were even built, the site itself has temples, an amphitheater, plazas, and ordinary houses. The society that actually built and lived here were apparently a gentle society, built on commerce and pleasure. Which is backed up by the fact that we haven't really found any defenses, mangled bodies, or tools of war. We did find tools of music though, specifically 32 flutes and 37 cornets. So the Andean people who inhabited this place didn't fight and they knew how to have a hoedown. Let's bring back this way of life, yeah? Maybe? Number 5. Hattusa, rejoice my late 90s PC gamers for I bring another point in your honor, the city of Hattusa of the Hittite Empire. Before this list, my only knowledge of the Hittites came from Age of Empires. I swear man, every time I start up a random scenario and just looking for a little 1998 nostalgia, the Hittites come up and attack me before I can get my walls up. It's the worst. Well, this makes a lot of sense actually because the Hittite Empire was one of the first civilizations to reach the Iron Age in real life. Hattusa was the capital of said empire. Today, the very beautiful ancient ruins can be found near Turkey. So the question is, how did such a strong empire fall? The answer was the Assyrians. Over time, the Assyrians conquered more and more until Hattusa kind of just was depopulated. There's been some interesting finds at the sites as well, such as two sphinxes that the international community got into an argument over whose museum they should sit in. What's the lesson in this one? Well, nothing lasts forever, and maybe wait till they build my walls to attack me. Just wait, dude. Just wait. Number four, Volubilis. Whoa, what's this? Another World Heritage Site? During the first century of both BC and AD, the city of Volubilis in modern day Morocco was a cultural mixing pot. First settled by the Berbers and eventually became the chief inland city of the Roman Empire province that was located here, which I will totally mess up the pronunciation of, so I'm not going to say it at all. People of both the Islamic and Christian religions would come here trading, living, and creating beautiful mosaics for over 10 centuries, and it became the capital of Idris I, founder of the Idris dynasty. The parts of the city that we have discovered so far include an aqueduct, thermal baths, and a triumphal arc. And they're all in pretty primo condition given all the crazy weather, earthquakes, and multiple different inhabitants over the year. It honestly seems like a place a lot of people should have heard of. Maybe I'm just the only one who hasn't, I don't know. Number three, Antioch. Boy, lots of learning today. And judging from the comments, you guys like learning from us, so thanks guys, that means a lot. Thank you so much. Besides a Monty Python skit about a hand grenade, I hadn't heard about Anatoc. I, who would have thought? I know. Sometimes referred to as the cradle of Christianity, it played a major role in Christianity and its longevity. Founded by one of Alexander the Great's generals, the city was in a prime location and benefited from all sorts of trade routes. Like the Silk Road, for example. Surprisingly, the city grew so much it even began to rival Alexandria, with an estimated population of 250,000 at its peak. Whew, that's a lot of people. It was a happening place. Sadly, it pulled to Detroit and went from a very profitable city to, uh, well, a not so popular one, as natural disasters like earthquakes and a declining trade made the city a not so happening place. All I know is that you pull the pin and count to three, not two. Three, and certainly not five. I do know that. Number two, Darren Kuyu Underground City. Hey, uh, honey, I, uh, found a hidden room behind the basement wall, and, uh, you're not gonna believe this, but it leads to an 18 story deep 7th or 8th century underground city used by around 20,000 people as a defense against invaders with ventilation shafts, waterways, stables, churches, and storage. So I, uh, I think the value of our house just went up. Yes, back in 1963, a local man in Cappadocia, Turkey, who was renovating his house, stumbled upon an entrance to this massive underground labyrinth of chambers, shafts, and corridors that goes over 85 meters deep into the ground. It had huge stone doors and everything from schools to wine rooms for people to use as a defense against invasion and religious persecution. 
We don't actually know which civilization built this city, but it once connected to many other underground cities that have been discovered in the area with miles long tunnels. It's honestly the coolest thing I've ever heard of, and I may need to plan a trip. Speaking of, have any of these sites maybe made the travel list for any of you guys? Let me know down below. Mm. Number one, Leventa. Mesoamerica, cool place, lots of treasure, and home of Leventa. These ruins are located in the spicy Mexican state of Tabasco. Constructed by the Olmecs, one of the oldest civilizations in the Americas, Leventa was a civic and ceremonial center. As a ceremonial center, there are tombs, mounds, and ceremonial offerings. Strangely enough, there's a pyramid as well, and some statues that have big head mode cheat enabled. They're big heads. It seems Leventa is a strange mishmash of little sites and artifacts, also including mosaics, altars, and some strange rock formations. All these lovely artifacts were not discovered fully until the 1950s, so. Makes you wonder what else we've lost the time in that thick jungle.